It's Friday, April the 18th, 2014. I'm Mark Chastley, and this is episode number 30 of TEM, Transport Evolved News for the week beginning April 14th, 2014. Volvo have been promising the world that they will have a zero emissions fleet by 2020. This week they have come one step closer to this goal by unveiling the Volvo S60L PPHEV, that's the Volvo S60L long wheelbase petrol plug-in hybrid vehicle. Based on the same through-the-road plug-in hybrid drivetrain we've seen before in Volvo's V60 plug-in hybrid, but with a gasoline engine instead of a diesel one, the plug-in hybrid sedan will launch in China early next year for the Chinese market. This car is powered by a 2-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder petrol engine, an 8-speed automatic gearbox, and a 50-kilowatt motor. This is joined to an 11.2-kilowatt-hour battery pack. The S60 L PPHEV has three main driving modes, pure, hybrid, and power. In pure mode, the car is powered purely by the electrical power for up to 30 miles of claimed range. In hybrid mode, the engine and motor work together, with the car switching between the two drivetrains for the best possible efficiency, while in power mode, both the engine and the two electric motors work simultaneously to give the highest torque and 0 to 60 time of 5.5 seconds. Not bad. According to Automotive News, a bill being passed through the Arizona state which would have reversed earlier legislation banning Tesla from selling its electric cars directly to customers within the state is likely to be dead. Coincided with the day that the New Jersey legislation came into force banning Tesla from selling electric cars to customers in that state, the Arizona bill was essentially killed by pro-auto dealer association senators determined to prevent it from reaching a vote before the end of the session. The Arizona state, which was due to close in about a week, has run out of time to discuss the bill and vote on it before the end of this year, meaning Tesla won't be able to sell its electric cars directly to Arizonans anytime soon. This is despite Arizona being one of the states that Tesla is considering locating their gigafactory. But there is some good news for Tesla when it comes to selling directly to customers. Washington state, where electric car registrations per capita are higher than anywhere else in the US, has just passed a bill that allows Tesla to not only continue operations in the Pacific Northwest, but expand its stores beyond the existing ones in Seattle and Bellevue. According to academics at the Center for Solar Energy and Hydrogen Research, who have been examining global electric car sales figures and an annual growth rate of the electric car marketplace, the number of electrically powered vehicles in the world has been doubling for the past few years. The number of EVs in the world now totals more than 400,000. And that number doesn't count motorcycles, bicycles, trucks, or other commercial vehicles like buses in its calculations, nor does it include standard hybrid cars. The number of cars has risen from almost 100,000 in 2012 to 200,000 in 2013 to 400,000 already this year. The USA leads the way with sales, with Japan in second place. China takes the bronze medal. Which car is the most sold? Well, with more than 100,000 cars sold to date, the Nissan Leaf is well ahead of the competition in terms of global electric car market share. Not too bad, Nissan. In an attempt to cope with demand, BMW announced this week that production of its all-electric i3 electric car and range-extended electric car has been increased from 70 vehicles a day to 100. That's an increase of 43%. Since production of the i3 started at BMW's factory last November, BMW have managed to produce about 5,000 cars, most of which have gone to European customers. But with the i3 set to launch in the coming months in the US, and reservations increasing on a daily basis, BMW need to make more cars to keep up with demand. The increase in production will likely push BMW's first year i3 production over 20,000 cars. That's almost twice what BMW originally planned. You may be forgiven for being sceptical about wireless charging. The technology just seems a bit too complex when compared to simply plugging in a cable. But one possible use of wireless charging is to place these chargers all down underneath a road to charge an electric vehicle while it's in motion. This is exactly what the UK government's plans to do. They want to electrify part of the UK motorway network. That's according to IET's Engineering and Technology magazine, which says the Highways Agency has confirmed its plans to electrify at least part of an English motorway to better understand and test the feasibility of wireless power transfer. Only a few details are available at the moment, but the proposed trial involves placing inductive plates at regular intervals along a roadway, transferring power to electric vehicles as they pass over the plates. This is known as semi-dynamic charging system, since the vehicles are passing over static charging points on the road. The semi-dynamic system will be installed on a UK motorway at some point in the near future. How near? We don't really know, though. It's not very often we get to write about celebrities on our site, but this week was one of those times. It seems Elon has been a bit of a naughty boy while showing off to some movie stars. As the UK's infamous Sun tabloid newspaper reported over the weekend, Depp and some of his fellow cast from the upcoming sci-fi film Transcendence were being given a personal demonstration of the Tesla Model S by Elon Musk himself when a local highway patrol pulled them over for speeding. 
In the car was Musk, Depp, who says he's never before ridden in the luxury all-electric sedan, Wally Pfister, Rebecca Hall and Paul Bettany. We think perhaps it wasn't so much the fact that Musk was speeding which caught the attention of the cops. Depp was sat in the front passenger seat with Paul Bettany riding in his lap. Little side note here, Paul Bettany is the voice of Jarvis in Iron Man, so it seems that the actor that plays Jarvis is hanging out with the man who inspired the on-screen version of Tony Stark. That's pretty cool. Coda dreamed of taking Chinese-made gasoline cars originally designed for a joint project between Volvo and Mitsubishi and turning them into an electric car. The idea was to buy the shell, or glider in automotive speak, and then do the final assembly in the US, making it a US-built car. Coda even applied for a low-interest loan from the Department for Energy. But it wasn't to be. With a retail figure approaching $39,000, the Coda sedan couldn't compete with cheaper, better-made cars from Nissan, Mitsubishi, Chevrolet and Ford. They eventually filed for bankruptcy. But what happened to all the gliders that were imported? It turns out, as with a lot of things, they've ended up on eBay. They are listed on eBay as, oddly, 2013 other makes Coda originally an electric vehicle no motor now. Yeah, odd title. The listing promises that the cars, most of them incomplete without any battery pack, motor, power electronics, charger or even air conditioning, would make a great way to own a complete body and interior if you are a Coda owner and want to keep a spare, which I personally think is a brilliant way to sell them. So if you are interested in a Coda glider, just head to eBay. The Mercedes-Benz B-Class electric drivers finally entered production. Made at the Mercedes-Benz Rasfat factory in Germany, where they already make the internal combustion engine A-Class, B-Class and GLA-Class cars, the B-Class electric drive will go on sale in the US later this spring and the UK sometime early in 2015. The car will have five seats, plenty of luggage space, a 132 kilowatt motor, a 0 to 60 time of 7.9 seconds. This car, in terms of performance, is a rival to the i3. Even the range is similar. On the NEDC test cycle, the i3 gets 118 miles, while the B-Class Electric gets 125 miles. It will be very interesting to see what Mercedes-Benz entry into the larger EV market does to the competition. EV incentives are often a contentious area. Some people love them, others think we are stealing money from others for our own toys. It can be hard for a town, city or even country to introduce them at all, but that doesn't seem to be happening in France. The Regional Council of Upper Normandy, in an attempt to become one of the first eco-regions of France, is offering its residents a whole slew of extra incentives designed to make buying an electric car far more financially attractive. Like incentives in some US states, Upper Normandy's incentives can be added alongside the pre-existing nationwide €6,300 environmental bonus purchase incentive offered by the French government to anyone who purchases a plug-in car. The incentive added by Upper Normandy, another €5,000, drops the price of buying an electric car even further. A bit of news from Transport Evolved now. We'd like to announce that we've been chosen as the official media partners for the 4th Annual WAVE, the World Advanced Vehicle Exposition. Taking place this year from May the 30th to June the 8th, we'll be joining teams from all over the world as they drive from Germany to Switzerland. Nikki, along with our intrepid cameraman and co-driver Adam Walker, will be making the trip from the UK all the way to Stuttgart in Germany, where the event starts. They'll be tweeting, YouTubing and blogging all the way. Me? I'll be here in the UK writing like a madman to make sure we keep up to date with all the other EV news that happens while they're away. We'll be telling you more about it in the coming weeks on transportevolve.com, but you can find out more about the actual trip on wavetrophy.com. And finally, we love to watch all the Tesla fan-made adverts. It's great to see people who are so in love with their cars that they go out of their way to share the joy. The latest fan-made video to hit YouTube is called Hope. The video uses Tesla stock footage and combines it with Charlie Chaplin's famous speech from the movie The Great Dictator. It's a brilliant effect. You should go and watch that video straight away, after this one finishes. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us for our talk show where we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. I'm Mark Cassidy, and until next time, stay tuned. I am Darth Vader, and I carry the whiteboard pens. I am very important. Ugh.